All right then, uh, hey, welcome back. It's unit 6-2. We're still gonna be solving quadratics by factoring here. This is gonna take us a, a step further. We Yesterday, if you remember, the factors were already done for us. Uh, today, we'll do a little bit more work. How about this for a math career, an actuary. Now, an actuary, uh, this is a very uh, challenging and highly sought after profession. You can tell the uh, income there is pretty healthy, even at the median salary, you're, pushing 90,000. Um, this really, you can read the, the information here, but this really has to do with about risk and corporations and how they handle their employees and insurance and taking risks with their money and the return on that money. Very challenging job. Uh, but if you like uh, detail, if you like really focusing in and getting down to where everything is, is handled and you're willing to work uh, pretty hard. You can make a really healthy living doing something like this, probably in a nice, uh, nice comfy office as well. But you will work hard for it. But anyway, great job there if you like that. All right, today we're going to uh, look at solving quadratic equations by factoring again. And let's have a real quick overview uh, or review of our vocabulary. Zero product property again. If two numbers multiplied together equals zero, then one of them has to be zero. And then also to make sure today we're going to be focusing on simplifying and making sure things are in standard form. In other words, all the equations should look like we're used to them looking and streamline down to bare bones so that they're easy to work with. So we'll see some examples of this as we go forward. All right, let's find the solutions to the following. So here we're given a quadratic equation, x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Now, if you recall, we've dealt with this expression before, but now we're adding the number 0 in there on the right-hand side of the equation. It's still the same thing. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to make sure our equation is simplified or reduced and in standard form. And sure enough, you've got um, 1x squared plus 4x minus 12. There's nothing here we can factor out. It is in descending order. The exponent of 2, 1, exponent of x to the 0 here, which we don't write, equals a constant. Okay. Next thing, let's factor the equation. Now, all the way back to unit 3, we talked about factoring. So we should see this, of course, and recognize this is what kind of factoring? Hopefully you said easy x, and that's correct. So we're going to drop a 4 into the top. Remember, it's going to be this coefficient times negative 12 at the bottom. Give me two numbers that add to 4 and multiply to negative 12. Hopefully you said 6 and negative 2. And now let's just go ahead and drop those into the parentheses like we know how to do. And now we're back to what we saw yesterday. x plus 6 times x minus 2 equals 0. So you've got um, these two factors here set equal to 0. On the left hand side, let's go ahead and look for something here. What would make this piece set equal to 0? Some of you may already know. We'll go ahead and solve that and I'll just break it down for you. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So our answer here is going to be negative 6. Let's break down the right-hand side. Something plus 2 is 0. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Something minus 2 is 0. I'm thinking of the positive value of 2 there. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. And so what does x equal here? Well, x is going to be positive 2. So again, you have your solution set there. x equals the set negative 6, comma, 2. Okay, two answers there for this. So whether you plug in a negative 6 into this function or a positive 2, in both cases your answer will be 0. All right, how about this one? Why don't you try this one here? Find the roots of the following. How about x squared plus 2x minus 8? So press pause. Try to work this out on your whiteboard or in your math notebook, preferably, and see what you get. All right then, let's see how you did. Uh, did you start by finding the roots here? Did you easy x this? Looks like it's already simplified just like the previous one. So if you easy x this down, we get a 2 there. We get a negative 8 at the bottom. You should have got positive 4 and negative 2 there as your two numbers. Go ahead and write that as the two binomials that we multiply together. Go ahead and set it up. Set it equal to 0. And let's solve for each one x plus 4 equals 0, subtract 4 from both sides, you should have got x minus 4, x equals negative 4 there, and then x minus 2 equals 0, and again we're looking at adding 2 to both sides. So there's your solution set, x equals negative 4 and 2. Alright, good. 
how about this one? Now, of course, this one here looks kind of like a little messy. So by now you should realize that you can't factor anything until we put it in the correct form. So what's the correct form here? Well, what I'm going to do is notice this negative 3x squared sitting over here. I really don't want to deal with a negative a if I don't have to. And we really don't have to. We have a lot of control here if we just take some steps. Remember, this is the correct form we're looking for. Write down here ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And notice that a is, generally speaking, positive. It doesn't have to be, but uh, by most accounts, we want to make a positive. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that negative 3x squared and move it to the right-hand side. So I'm simply going to add 3x squared to both sides. And that gives me this. Now again, it still looks a little uh, backwards here for us. And what we can do here is take a look. Remember Swiper here. Uh, what can we remove from each one of these terms? So I'm thinking I see something in common here between 3x squared, 18x, and 27. Do you see that we can factor out a 3? Now here's why we want to do this. Because when I factor out a 3, I'm left with this trinomial, x squared plus 6x minus, or plus 9. This is 3 multiplied by this trinomial. So tell me, uh, what's the opposite or the inverse operation of multiplying? Well, that's dividing. So what if we did something clever here, and I just simply divided both sides of this equation by the number 3? Now, of course, on this side, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we're just left with this. But what's 0 divided by 3? Well, that's 0. So now we've streamlined this equation from this kind of clunky thing at the top, where it looked kind of weird, down to something that's very manageable where we end up with a nice easy quadratic equation just like we're used to doing. So factor the equation. We get a 6 here, a 9 here, two numbers that add to 6 multiply to 9, 3 and 3 of course. Okay, And we place that into an equation where we set it equal to 0. So x plus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0. Alright, so try to remember what's going to be step 3 and 4. So after we've set it equal to 0, what do we do now? Alright, let's take a look. Make sure now that we've set equal to 0, and now we're going to solve both cases for x. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x minus x equals negative 3. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and now again I get x equals negative 3. Because these are both the same answer, I'm only going to use it one time. So if a factor duplicates, don't write it more than once. So in this case, the solution set is simply x equals negative 3. And that's true, of course. If you put a negative 3 in here, we'd end up with, if we did this, if we put negative 3 here, negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 9 is equal to 0. Let's see if that's true. Well, what's negative 3 squared? Well, this, of course, is just 9. What is positive 6 times negative 3? Well, that's negative 18. And this is plus 9. And if you do your math there, 9 plus 9 minus 18, sure enough, equals 0. Okay? So that worked out nicely. All right, then. Let's take a look here. Since there's only one solution on the parabola that's only intersects the, the x-axis at one point, so this is kind of what it would look like right here. Come down and hit and take off again. All right, well, that's it for Lesson 6-2. Again, you can jump in there at Think Central and see Dr. Berger's version. It'll be similar. He might offer you a, a new insight or two. And uh, make sure you bring your notebook and be ready to go when we see you next. All right, then. Talk to you soon.